Chengdu is the capital of Sichuan province in southwest China and has a population of about 11 million. Its greatest claim to fame is the research base of giant panda breeding. This is set in a beautiful parkland environment. It was started in 1986 with six giant pandas rescued from the wild, like this one. Firstly, we were shown a film of a panda being born. At birth, the babies weigh one thousandth the weight of their mothers. In the wild, pandas frequently have twins, but one always dies. Here, however, they have a 100% survival rate as they alternate care of the babies between the mother and the nursery. As a result, the population has risen to 146. This is one that was born in June 2016. By the time they are a year old, both twins are living with their mother and playing together. Mother is more interested in just eating. Bamboo, of course. Walkways lead between different enclosures. Here were a group of two-year-olds who were becoming much more independent. Largely as a result of the work carried out here, the giant panda has been removed from the endangered species list. What a poser! They seem to have a continuous itch. They're not the most agile of animals. The next enclosure is where the mothers go between babies. Walking along to the next enclosure, a beautiful red panda came through a gap in the fence and walked ahead of us. These are unrelated to the giant panda, but are endangered, and there's a breeding program here for them as well. They're larger than a domestic cat and have a waddling gait due to their short front legs. They tend to be solitary animals and so don't want to share their food. They have a pseudo thumb on their front paws, effectively giving them six fingers, helping to grasp things. They seem to suffer from the itch as well. They eat mostly bamboo and may eat small mammals, birds, eggs, flowers and berries. A fleet of electric carts ferries visitors around the site. In the centre of Chengdu is the People's Park. Created in 1911, it's the largest and most popular park in the city.
Within the park is quite a large boating lake. As it was a public holiday, lots of local families were out for the day. Even so, there were peaceful spots to practice Tai Chi. There are several tea houses in the park, and all you can get there is tea. Lots of visitors bought the bubble making kit, which the kids loved. Within the park is a fun fair. The park also contains the monument to the railway protection movement, the movement which effectively triggered the revolution leading to the formation of the People's Republic of China. A local ladies group were posing for photographs. This man is making fancy sugar work. It seemed a shame for the children to eat it. Artists work in the park and this one was doing typical Chinese watercolour. Another man was doing sand painting. There are food stalls throughout the park. Eventually we came back to the lake before leaving the park. On then to Wenshu Temple, also known as the Manjushri Monastery, the best preserved Buddhist monastery in Chengdu. At the entrance are statues of the mythical protectors of Buddha. There's a series of temple buildings separated by courtyards. Here, worshippers light incense and pray to the Buddha. These dragons, which people touch for luck as they pass, have their paws on coins or ancient Chinese currency. The people start to pray at an early age, but risk the cleaners sweeping up round them. Whether a wooden fish faces into or out of a monastery shows whether it's open to visiting monks. Outside the monastery is a pagoda which the faithful walk around. Nearby, next to a stone turtle, is the entrance to a tea house. Tea houses are very popular in China, where it's the national drink.
Rosa, our guide here, demonstrated how to prepare and drink the tea, starting by washing the leaves in boiling water. This is designed to stop you getting the leaves stuck in your teeth. Didn't work though. Whilst in the tea house, why not have your ears cleaned out? Wang Jianglu Park houses a collection of 270 species of bamboo, as well as various other trees and shrubs. It can provide a cool place to stroll at the end of a hot day. In the evening, we went for a Sichuan hot pot, where you cook your own food in a boiling bowl of soup. The next day, we left the city and travelled 75 miles to Lushan at the confluence of the Dadu and Min rivers. This is the queue for the boat to go to see the giant Buddha. So while guide Vivian held our places, we went for a look round the market. There's tourist tat at the side of the river, but one street back was the food market. These are duck's feet, very popular in China. By the time we got back, we were almost at the head of the queue to take the boat to see the Buddha statue. Although the hill on the other side of the river resembles a Buddha sleeping on his back. Along with Vivian, we put on our life jackets as the boat sailed away from the city. You can walk to the statue, but it's a very long way and involves some steep climbs. Construction was started in the year 713 by a monk who hoped that the Buddha would calm the turbulent waters that plagued ships on the river. At 233 feet high, it's the largest stone Buddha in the world. The ears are so large that birds nest in them, so they have to be regularly cleaned. The Buddha is seated, with his hands resting on his knees. Ironically, the massive construction resulted in so much stone being removed from the cliff and deposited in the river that the currents were altered, making the water safe for passing ships. We finished our tour of the Chengdu area with a delicious meal of local and food. It's not really chicken, just uh, with uh, spicy soup inside, but with uh, chicken meat or vegetable, everything inside. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah.